So, hello, my name is Imsal Albandakji. I'm a PhD student. I'm working in Dr. Richard Austin's lab, and today um, I'll introduce you to calcification, arterial calcification, that is a common occurrence in kidney failure patients and leads to uh, heart failure. So it's interesting that the way calcification occurs is really through the dysregulation of phosphate. It's one of the minerals in our bodies that is a key component in the formation of our skeleton. Um, it usually occurs through diet intake. That's how it circulates within our blood and then it is basically deposited within our bones. And it leads to the hardening of our bones. And it's filtered throughout or excreted out the urine. So in f kidney failure patients, a common occurrence is that when your kidneys are failing, it's unable to excrete any of the toxins or excess ions such as phosphate through the urine. So it accumulates within our body and because the skeleton is already hard enough and it's already taken enough of the phosphate ion, the body has a way to compensate to deposit this phosphate because it's not being excreted. So one way the body tries to compensate and clear it out from our blood is basically to deposit it in soft tissues. And one of the soft tissues in our bodies is the arteries. So the, the heart and kidney form an axis of circulation. And what happens is with kidney failure is that uremic toxins and other ions, like I said, accumulate. And this gives rise to arterial, arterial calcification. Now, kidney failing, failure patients have a 20 times higher risk in developing cardiovascular disease. And about 50% of them actually die due to cardiac failure. And so on our arteries, our arteries are made up of three key layers, the connective tissues, the smooth muscle layers, and the endothelium. The smooth muscle layer is the key layer that actually regulates the elasticity of the vessel itself and controls blood flow and blood pressure. When in, within the blood, when phosphate um, rises, is what happens here, as you can see in panel B, is that the arteries, this is an artery that's taken from a mouse, has severely calcified. And the region where it's boxed and magnified is actually the hardened artery. It's actually, it's hard, it's so hard that you could actually take it and it will crush in your fingers. Um, and that's how the, the vessel loses its capacitance, its elasticity, and, be, and thus it leads to impaired blood flow. The bottom figure here is just a cross-sectional figure of an immunohistochemistry of an artery. And as you can see, the blackened area within the artery here, as you can see here, these are all calcified regions. Because phosphate is one of the key ions that leads to crystallization, it le literally does the same thing within the arteries as it does in the bone. And what happens is the arteries start to rupture within, and they, lose, they basically become impaired. So this is a CT angiography from a kidney failing patient. She's only 40 years old. And you can see that within the angiography, this, this, uh, the whole lining of the aorta, that's the heart, and then just protruding off the heart is the aortic vessel. You can see the whole vessel is calcified. And right next to it is the skeletal vertebrae. And you can see it's calcified just to the similar degree as a skeletal vertebrae, which means that this patient has impaired blood flow. And that could lead to end organ failure. So what happens in kidney failure? Well, one of the common occurrences, as I, as I said, was calcification. And when blood flow is impaired, that puts an increased burden on the heart, making the heart work twice as much and leading to um, cardiac failure or heart failure. And these patients are at a very increased risk of dying from heart failure and not from kidney failure. So I'd like to thank you.